They hurried back and forth, checking they had the right tools. They were ensuring everyone stayed safe. The bright blue and red police cars flashed, grabbing the attention of passing drivers. But instead of focusing on the accident, people were watching two emergency teams arguing. The road was already tight and now it was blocked by five police cars and an ambulance causing traffic to pile up. There were two EMTs on the scene. One was trying to stabilize someone injured in the accident, while the other looked at the cop cars in disdain. The cruisers were blocking them in. With his partner already placing the injured person on a stretcher, Troy ran up to the sergeant on the scene to ask his buddies to move their cruisers. The cop glanced over at the EMT with a look on his face that would curl milk. Finally, after muttering something under his breath, he told the other officer to move their car. This was something they flat out ignored. Troy was so surprised he even took a step back. Would this guy really block an ambulance and refuse to move it? The sergeant wasn't impressed by his subordinate and made a beeline for the cruiser. The door to the cruiser was locked. Troy was getting impatient. He told him, We really need to get out now. He could see his partner was ready in the ambulance, waiting for the car to be moved. Troy felt his patience wearing thin and his temper rising. EMTs were trained to stay calm in the worst situations, but this wasn't something he'd ever trained for. The police were supposed to be there to help them with their job, not hinder them. He thought that maybe they could try pushing the thing or smashing its windows. Just then, Troy noticed a tow truck on the other side of the street. Troy could see the man sitting in the cab of his truck drinking some water. Maybe he could help them, Troy thought. After the sergeant saw what Troy's idea was, he ran to the tow truck and asked the driver if he could help. The driver said that he was called as an extra anyway. They asked him to get the cruiser off the road immediately. What's your rate? Troy asked the driver. He named his price and the sergeant couldn't help but grin. Troy also started smiling when he looked at the sergeant. But they had work to do, so Troy rushed back to the ambulance and explained everything to his partner. Then they watched what came next. They watched the tow truck do its job as the driver hooked the cable over the hard point and turned the lever in his cab. They heard the motor start up. It was a loud drone as the cruiser's front wheels lifted off the tarmac. Then the truck driver towed it to the grass on the side of the road. They could see the cop to whom the cruiser belonged run to the cab and tell the driver what he thought of the situation. Troy heard the rest of what unfolded after they left through the sergeant. From what he was told, the young cop wasn't impressed to say the least. The cop's face was red with anger, and he reprimanded the cab driver, telling him to put his cruiser down immediately. The tow truck driver stared at him and just shook his head. The cab driver opened his mouth and said, My rate is $100. Are you crazy, Sarge? You're not going to let him do this. Yeah, the cop stammered, looking from the tow truck driver to the sergeant. The sergeant just looked at him and said, it's legal to move any vehicles that block emergency services. And that the rookie cop wouldn't let that discourage him from trying to get his car back. I'll give you $40. That's it. The scruffy driver leaned against the truck and shook his head. Nope. Drop fee is $150. $100. And it will be more if I pull it away. The headstrong man let out an angry but defeated sigh and pulled out his wallet. He peeled off four twenties from his fold and shoved it into the driver's hand. When the tires hit the ground and the hook came off, the young man jumped in his car and squealed away, still boiling with anger. The sergeant finally relaxed and let out a long, hard laugh. Apparently, this lesson had been a long time coming. The new guy had only been on the job for a couple of weeks. He was like most rookies, with an inflated ego and a walk-the-walk -walk attitude with everyone. This guy was a bit worse and acted like he ran the place. There was also another hilarious thing that was kept a secret. The grounds and law they had used for moving the car were actually false. There was no law at all. The young cocky buck didn't need to spend $100. However, as far as his boss was concerned, it was worth the lesson that cops were not exempt from the rules. As for Troy, they were able to get to the hospital, and the injured people in the accident got the care they needed. He and his partner also got a good, long laugh. It let out the day's stress and reminded them that everyone was one big team, even the people you don't expect. Troy was so amused by what had happened that he felt compelled to share it on social media on a thread titled Petty Revenge. Somehow the stars had aligned to take the cocky cop down a peg, and readers loved it.
The post has since racked up hundreds of comments. Most social media people couldn't believe the audacity of the rookie cop and were amused, too. Some shared similar stories of their own. A user who goes by the name of Hammer Raptor wrote, Worked for the local FD a few years back as FFMT. Worked a car accident. We parked the ambulance and truck near the scene. Rookie cop decided he didn't like where the ambulance was parked. Decided to get in and move the ambulance about 150 to 200 FT away from the scene. Out traffic, any extra equipment we may have needed in emergency transport that may have been necessary were now minutes away. The chief, a 55-year-old female, went to fisticuffs with a cop. Just irid, had to pull her off the cop. Had the police chief on the scene in five minutes. A screaming match ensued for about 20 minutes about the PD not interfering with our operations. He continued, The accident victim was fine, and we were cleared off the scene rather quickly. The PD nicely decided to buy the fire department dinner that night. The chief was not reprimanded and became a good story across the department. Another user wrote about another experience involving firefighters and cops coming to blows. When I was a volunteer firefighter for several years, I was trained and cleared to operate all the department's apparatuses, he wrote. One night, we were dispatched to an accident on the nearby interstate. I was operating our second engine as the first was already on a call. The three vehicles involved in the accident blocked the left shoulder and the left of four main lanes. As protocol to protect the victims and crew, I placed the engine blocking the two left lanes. We don't move until we are finished with the scene. We hadn't finished helping all the victims when a trooper approached me, insisting I move our engine to open up another lane of traffic. I explained that we needed to protect the victims and my crew until we were done. This went back and forth until I walked away to assist at the scene. About a minute later, the trooper returned, raising his voice and demanding the engine be moved. I reiterated that our equipment was spread out and we needed the space to work. He then questioned the medic crew about who was in charge and they pointed to me. The trooper looked surprised as he walked away, mentioning he would handle it later. A few minutes afterward, a rescue chief and friend arrived. I explained the situation and he assured me he would handle it. The trooper left me alone for the rest of the night. Dealing with challenging situations is part of our job as emergency workers. Ambulances usually have the right of way as they save lives. Surprisingly, EMS crews receive threatening letters almost daily. The West Midlands Ambulance Service reports at least one incident of abuse against its staff daily. If you urgently need to access your house blocked by us, please knock where the emergency is, says Lee Brentnall, paramedic and ambulance operations manager. We may move if treating a patient who doesn't need both of us. We prioritize life-threatening emergencies. Please be patient, he concludes.